A question came in on the Crate Hackers private group. Henry asks, how about creating a YouTube video on how you might start over with a new music library? Say a DJ has 10,000, 30,000 songs and the thought of reviewing and deleting is too overwhelming. Might it just be better to start from scratch? Oh, okay, this is a good one. What I will give you are some benefits for starting over. Number one, better familiarity with your collection. What is that song that Jimmy Buffett sings whenever he goes on tour? Margaritaville. You ever think that Jimmy goes back to his hotel after singing that song and wants to scream into a pillow because he's played that song so many times? I always think about Margaritaville and I always think about Jimmy Buffett whenever I add a song into my collection. That song made him millions. And I'm betting you, since that song made him so much money, he knows every chord, every word, every chorus, in and out. It's his brand. And brands are another thing I do want to bring up in today's talk. Better familiarity with your collection gives you a chance to have more informed decisions every time you push play. You'll know offhand how to mix different songs together with a little better recall if you have less songs staring back at you. If you're going to bring a song into your collection, make sure you know that song inside and out and will pass the test of time. I really want you to scrutinize the graduation process of download into master folder. We do preach the one folder method here at Create Hackers, but I'm gonna say it's okay to break the rule and put a second folder over to the side and put those songs that may not ever make the cut into your pristine collection. These ones over here don't have to be cue pointed. You may never play them again. You really wanna get some good validation before you take that song and drop it into that one folder that makes you the most money. All right, so number two, less analysis paralysis. It never occurred to me that we stumbled upon a psychological problem that DJs have. When, when faced with a vast library, it can be overwhelming to decide what to play next. We call it doom scrolling, where you're, oh gosh, what do I play next? What do I play next? Oh no. Analysis paralysis. It's where you freeze up and you can't make the right choice next. I have a story about that. I went to a car dealership and the salesperson took me out on the showroom floor, showed me one model, we moved on to the next model, and then he stopped at the third car. And I was still interested in looking all the way down the showroom floor, but he said, are you sure? And I asked him, why would I need to be sure? Getting to know the salesperson a little bit more, he shared a tactic that they trained him. He said that his boss wouldn't allow him to show any more than three vehicles during a sales pitch. And the reason why was because he learned that the brain can only retain three things at a time in most circumstances. Adding a fourth option tips into analysis paralysis. Too many choices. We often joke about the song 24K Magic in our videos because this was the song that kind of helped us test our software. There's no need to have 24 versions of 24K Magic. But point two to our conversation is that analysis paralysis is a real issue with DJs who have too much music. And this takes us to point number three, quality over quantity. By the way, if you like what's going on here, go ahead and click like, click subscribe. We just celebrated 3,000 YouTube subscribers. Quality over quantity. How many of us remember the day and age of going to the record stores? Sam Goody, Virgin, Tower Records, going through the aisles, sifting through the back of the record collections to try and find that great deal or album that you've been in search of forever. You finally find it. It's a great price. You pick it up, you take it out of its sleeve. You view the lyrics inside the album art. I loved it when you could open up an album and you'd be like two, like a double disc. <laughs> there was just more room for pictures on the inside. This is an art that sadly today's generation will never experience but it also speaks volumes about the art of selecting songs and the actual choice of, am I going to buy this song? And then the art of taking it back home, unwrapping it, putting it on the spindle. That was true curation. And you wanted quality out of this purchase. You didn't want any skips in that record, right? I want you to think about every MP3 you have as one of those artifacts. Treat it like a piece of vinyl. I think that's honestly why I migrated to Pioneer's Record Box. Just the name alone. There was Virtual DJ, but Record Box. I was like, oh, 
okay, so this is like the old days of a, an actual box <laughs> filling up the crate with records. Let's go. So my point is quality over quantity. My fourth point is easier library management. Having less music makes things less complex. It's funny because in the Crate Hackers private group, I feel like sometimes we do a weight loss program with a hard drive. I'll see comments like, oh my gosh, I just deleted 250,000 songs. And everybody cheers them on. <laughs> it's like stepping on a scale only for songs. Listen, keeping everything tidy and organized, I know it's a slog sometimes and you don't want to do it. But if you can take this upcoming season and really think about carving out a month or two, say there's that one season where the weather is too bad and you can't do gigs. Stop down, back up everything first before you get too crazy, and then start taking big slices away and get down to a manageable number. What is that manageable number for you? For some, it's different. It depends on what you're known for, what your brand is. What are you known for in your community, or what do you want to be known for? Here's the thing. If you are paid to perform particular events, you want to make sure you have the quickest recall you can possibly have in that particular profession. It's over in hobby land, I like to call it, the sandbox, if you will, that you can start to carve out another version of you. I've seen so many DJs, like myself, for example. I love weddings, but I really love festivals. Part of me dreams about being on stage with some of the greats like uh, Geta and Tiesto, so allow me that chance to dream here in my home studio, right? <laughs> I don't have to get too finicky about my sandbox, but I want to make sure I have a lean and clean library for the one that helps me pay my bills. For me, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. A variety of events come my way from corporate to wedding, clubs to mitzvahs, you name it. And I only have 3,000 songs in my library. Here, I'll show you. Oh, wait, no, I lied. Hold on. Take a look. 2,600. 2,600 songs. That might seem impossible to you, but you have to think about that stringent application process before it goes into the master bucket. You feel me? There's a big misconception about this one folder and I have to get rid of all my songs. No, just work on your Margaritaville performance. Have that record box of everything you know from point A to point B. If it's 200 songs, great. Start there. If it gets to be 2,000, 3,000, all right, we're in the same ballpark. But there's that point where you feel like when you step on a scale, oh man, I gained too much weight, that you need to go back to the gym. Set that in your head. What's that number for you for music that you carry with you to perform? You're not going to play 10,000 tracks in five hours, but if 10,000 is the number for you, go for it. Not every barn venue in Tennessee has a hotspot or Wi-Fi. I get it. But we do now have streaming as a very viable option in 2023. So you can justify getting rid of much of the music because it's there that you can pull down at a moment's notice in the cloud. Two more points and we'll get out of here. Also, we love this kind of conversation. If you would like to be a part of the community that asks questions like this, if you do have maybe a YouTube video idea, join us in the Create Hackers private group. But first, you got to become a Create Hacker. So we're going to give you seven free days to join the Hacker Squad. A full week of the Crate Hackers community and desktop software for Windows and Mac. Click the link in the comments. Number five, more time for other skills. The controversial sync button. Was it right? Was it wrong? We've beaten that topic to the ground. But at the end of the day, it was a button that freed up many of us to be so much more creative. It, it was like giving us an extra hand to do something else allowing us to be creative. This is the same with your music library. Less time worrying about the manual labor and more time working out the creative. Having a great music collection is wonderful, but if you can't beat match, if you can't scratch, if you can't sample and get that crowd moving, you're missing out on the biggest aspect of entertainment of all. I'll wrap it up with number six, carving out your unique sound. Going back to Jimmy Buffett, Margaritaville, we all know him for that song, that beach vibe. You get almost like an ocean breeze and visions of a yacht sailing overseas. He painted that vision, right? What are you? What is the identity that you want to carve out? Only certain genres and certain styles of music are going to complement that brand, that identity. 
It's not going to require a terabyte of music to find your sound. I don't have any advice for you much further than take time to ask others what they think you could be. Look in the mirror and do some exercises. I, it's a personal journey. And I just want to help unlock that ability. If it means music organization, then yay, I did my part. There we go. So we covered six ways to maybe help you consider starting over. Henry, thank you so much. I really appreciate you tossing me this topic. It was a good one. If you're part of the Create Hackers community, you can bring up topics like this, and I'll do my best to tackle them for you right here on the YouTube channel that uh, we should be subscribed to by now. <laughs> if you have not clicked subscribe and you've been through this video all the way through, what's going on? Where's our friendship? Do we need to talk it out? Thanks again for watching. I'm Aaron Trailer, and one's in the chat. Happy hacking.